Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles, and welcome to another micro struggle. Today, what I would like to do is review the different types of optimization problems that you might see in microeconomics. I know there's a lot of information across those four types of problems. It can be really hard to keep it straight. So what I would ultimately like to do with this video is show you guys a couple tables that I think are helpful that sort of summarize the main points of each type of problem. And I think it'll be really helpful for you to have those tables when you're reviewing for homeworks or tests or exams. If there's something that's not in this table that you think would be useful, drop a comment below and I'll sort of fill that information in in the comments as a response. But timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Before we get into this table, I just want to talk real quick about vocab and make sure we're all clear on the vocab that I'm going to use in those tables. So remember that there are four main parts to any optimization problem. You have your objective function, that's the thing you're trying to maximize or minimize. You have a constraint, and that's what prevents you from, say, choosing an infinite number of goods to buy at the store because you don't have enough money. You have an optimum, which is your solution to your constrained optimization problem. And you have a value function where basically you take your optimum, you plug your optimum value into your objective function, and you get the value of that objective function evaluated at the optimum. Once again, just to make sure we're clear, let's use the utility maximization problem in a little more detail to make sure you understand, and then we'll get right into those tables. So here's the utility maximization problem that we all know and love. You know that we're trying to max utility subject to the budget constraint, where the utility function we call our objective function, the budget constraint we're calling our constraint. Once we solve this utility maximization problem, we get what we call Marshallian demand. That's the optimal level of each good that we want to buy. So that's our optimum. Marshallian demand is our optimum. If we take that optimum value of x and y, we plug that back into the utility function, we're going to get a utility value. We call that utility value our indirect utility. Indirect utility is the value function for the utility maximization problem. And just one more thing to note while we're here, remember that x and y, those are the things we're choosing. Those are our choice variables. And things like px, py, and w are just parameters of the problem. Those are not things we actually get to choose. When we're optimizing, we're only thinking about the values of variables that we can actually choose or our choice variables. Now that we've sort of got all that in mind, let's jump right into these tables where I've made two tables, one for consumer theory and one for producer theory. Since we just talked about utility maximization problem, we'll start with consumer theory. So here's the utility maximization problem. I'm going to go kind of fast since we just sort of talked about it. So our objective function, unsurprisingly, is utility. We have a budget constraint. We're going to find the optimum, which we call Marshallian demand. And maybe I'll add a star just to make sure it's clear it's Marshallian demand. We take our Marshallian demand. We plug that into the utility function. We get the value function, which we call indirect utility V. And for the envelope theorem in terms of the utility maximization problem, we have Roy's identity. Roy's identity says that if you have the value function, you can first take the derivative of that value function with respect to the price of one good. Then you put a negative sign in front of it, and you divide that whole thing by the derivative of the value function with respect to wealth, or w, and that's how you get your Marshallian demand for a specific good. Now, if we turn to the other side of the consumer choice theory problem, we're talking about expenditure minimization. In expenditure minimization, we are trying to minimize the amount of money that we spend at the grocery store, which is just this expression here. Our constraint in this type of optimization problem is that we want our utility to be greater than or equal to some reference utility u bar. Once we solve this minimization problem and we get exactly how much of each good we want, we call that Hicksian demand. If we take Hicksian demand and plug that back into our objective function, we're going to get an expenditure function, and we call that expenditure function E. Now the envelope theorem for expenditure minimization is called Shepard's lemma. You can see I almost forgot an H, so I just sort of added that back in. But Shepard's lemma says that if you take the derivative of the expenditure function of the value function with respect to the price of one good, you're going to get back the Hicksian demand for that good. The other thing to remember for utility maximization and expenditure minimization is remember that if you put the utility that you get in V here, if you make that the reference utility in the expenditure minimization problem, you're going to get exactly the same answer. Marshallian and Hicksian demand will be the same. Also, if you take the amount of money that you spend, so your expenditure function here, and you make that W in the utility maximization problem, it will also be the case that Marshallian demand is equal to Hicksian demand. So just some things to note about consumer theory. Now, in producer theory, we have profit maximization and cost minimization. And just remember, profit maximization only works if your production function is decreasing returns to scale. Cost minimization does not have that limitation. 
all production functions have a solution to cost minimization problem, but if you have something like increasing returns to scale, the profit maximization problem is just gonna tell you to make an infinite number of your output, which is not really useful. So in which case you would wanna use cost minimization. But if you're doing a profit maximization problem, you're trying to maximize profit. We define profit as just, this is your revenue. This is price times your output. This is your cost of your inputs. Your constraint is that you want to be on or underneath your PPF. Once you find the solution to this profit maximization problem, you're going to figure out what your output is going to be, or Y star of P. This is your output level given the price of your output. Once you know that, you can plug that back into the profit function and figure out what your profit is. And the envelope theorem for the profit maximization problem is called Hotelian's Lemma. Hotelian's Lemma says that if you take the derivative of the profit function with respect to the price of an output, you're gonna get your optimal amount of output. On the other hand, if you're doing a cost minimization problem, you're trying to minimize the amount of money that you're spending on inputs, subject to the fact that you wanna produce at least Q bar amount of output. Once you solve this minimization problem, what you're gonna get is called conditional factor demand. Your conditional factor demand we call Z star, for example. If I take your conditional factor demand, I plug that back into your objective function, I'm gonna get the cost to produce that amount of output the minimum cost in order to produce Q bar amount of output. And the envelope theorem, once again, is gonna be Shepard's Lemma. Shepard's Lemma, once again, almost misspelled, except for this little correction right here. And Shepard's Lemma says that if you take the derivative of the cost function with respect to the input price of one good, you will get back the conditional factor demand of that good. So hopefully this just gives you a really quick reference guide for both consumer theory and producer theory optimization problems. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.